Hey guys, this is God of Politics. Welcome back to a brand new video. But before we get started with this video, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, join the Discord that is linked down in the description. But in today's video, I will be doing the best case scenario for Democrats in the Senate. I haven't decided where I'll do a best case scenario for Republicans just because of the fact that things are looking a lot better now for Senate Democrats than they are for Republicans. But you know, I, I haven't decided on that yet. But this video is about the best case scenario for the Democrats. Now, there are a lot of opportunities for Democrats to pick up in the Senate, but a lot of, you know, the polls we've been seeing, uh, a lot of the data we've been seeing shows the Democrats might get a lot of, you know, very close in a lot of these seats, but not actually winning them. So this is the best case scenario in which they might be able to win some of these seats. Now, starting off, Democrats have 30 five seats republicans have 30 seats uh and you know as always we'll start off by doing the safe seats for the republicans first we have the state of idaho we have the state of wyoming we have the state of south dakota nebraska oklahoma arkansas louisiana as well as tennessee and west virginia and that is going to be it there's nine safe seats for the republicans putting them at nine uh 39 safe seats and then for democrats i do believe in this scenario they would win oregon safe as well as new mexico safe illinois obviously minnesota with tina smith as well as virginia new jersey delaware rhode island um massachusetts new hampshire so that puts the Democrats at 45 safe seats, Republicans at 39 safe seats. Getting into these likely margin states, first I do believe uh, that Alaska would be a likely margin state. You have Al Gross here who might you know, get it a little bit closer in this scenario. He still won't win, but he might be able to get it um, a little bit closer, pushing that into the likely column there. The next state would be the state of Mississippi. This is a matchup of the 2018 race with Mike Espy versus Sidney Hyde-Smith. We've actually had some polls showing it, you know, within 10 percentage points. So in this scenario, you could argue that it'll be, you know, 9 to 10 percentage points, which would just barely push it into the likely column here. Same thing with Alabama. This is very wishful thinking for Democrats to believe that you know, could even be close like this at all. But I do believe in this scenario, it would again go by around similar to Mississippi, 9 to 10 percentage points there. I also believe that the state of Kentucky could buy, go by a likely margin. You know, Amy McGrath does have a lot of fundraising. You know, some polls have shown it to be marginally uh, closer than some other polls. And so I do believe in this scenario, you know, Mitch McConnell might get a little bit of a run for his money. He might have to spend some money in the state pushing it into the likely column there. Um, and that is actually going to be all of the likely margin states for Republicans there. And now for the Democrats, I do believe they would win Arizona by likely margin. Mark Kelly here is doing amazing in fundraising, almost doubling Martha McSally's numbers. This is a state that is trending blue, and you're going to have a lot of ticket splitters that vote for Donald Trump and for Mark Kelly. And Mark Kelly is a very good candidate, pushing that into the likely column there. As well the state of Colorado. Colorado is a state, um, you know, in which you do have John Hickenlooper, who's the former governor of the state, running for uh, to be the senator here against Cory Garner. He was a very popular governor, and we've had some scandals and things like that. He should be able to easily win, regardless. Same thing with the state of Michigan. You have Gary Peters, who is a very generic Democrat here. He's running against John James, who already lost by seven percentage points in 2018, and the polls here have not been very good for John James. So Gary Peters could be able to win by likely margin, regardless. Uh, of it, whether it's the best case scenario or not, but that should be quite an easy victory for him. And then that's all of the likely blue states here. Democrats are already at 48 seats, only two seats away from a 50-50 tie, three away from a majority there. Republicans are at 43. Now getting to these lean margin states, first I do believe the state of Texas could go by lean margin in this scenario. You have John Cornyn here, who is, you know, uh, he's been a senator for a while. He does have an incumbency advantage. He does better in the suburbs than Donald Trump does, but this is a little state that is trending blue of MJ can get some more fundraising, things like that. She might be able to make it a little bit closer, pushing it into the lean column there, as well as the state of South Carolina. Uh, South Carolina, you know, this is would be the upper tier, um, you know, let lean margin. It would be around almost five percentage points here. But Jamie Harrison has been doing amazing in terms of fundraising for the state of South Carolina, and turnout is going to mean a lot in this state. With Kamala Harris's VP, that could bring black turnout up a little bit, um, as well as some polls have actually shown it to be, you know, statistical tie in this state. You know, you can't, you know, necessarily trust the polls like that, but it does show what it does show. And based off the data we have now, I do believe in the best case scenario, Democrats could eke this out and winning it by a le or losing it by only a lean margin there. And that is actually all of the 
lean states there, getting to these lean states. For Democrats, first, I do believe they would win the state of North Carolina in this scenario by a lean margin. You know, some of the polls for Cal Cunningham have been absolutely amazing, and, you know, some of them have been even too hard to believe and impossible, showing him up 16 points, things like that. I think right now he'd win by a couple percentage points, but in a best case scenario by November, he'd still be able to win by a couple percentage points. In this case, you know, in this case, um, Joe Biden would also probably be winning um, this election here uh, in the state of North Carolina, which would help Cal Cunningham as well as the fact, you know, you have Tom Tillis, who is running a couple points behind Donald Trump here. And so in the state of North Carolina, a best case scenario for Democrats, I do believe they would be able to win it by a lean margin there. Same thing with the state of Maine. Now, some people have been saying this is going to be the closest election. That very well may be the case. But the polls right now are showing that Sarah Gaten is doing quite well in terms of polls showing her even by a likely margin. And while I don't believe she's going to win by a likely margin come November, I do believe that, you know, on top of her fundraising numbers as well, it is going to help her in the state of Maine. And if it's the best case scenario, I do believe she would be able to narrowly win. Now, we do have these final states here. Um, and getting into these till margin states for Republicans first, even the best case scenario, I don't think Barbara Vollier wins some polls. You know, we've actually had two polls that showed it within striking distance. We had a PPP poll that showed it within one point. We had a Survey USA poll, which is a very good poll, showing it um, within two percentage points. And while, you know, I do expect the undecided voters to break for Roger Marshall, at least for now, it is looking quite good for Barbara Vollier. And, you know, once more people think you know, and realize that Roger Marshall is a more of a normal Republican than Chris Kobach is, it will help Roger Marshall. But, you know, this is going to be a state that is competitive in this election. And while I don't think Barbara Vollier is going to be able to win, um, I do think she'd be able to make it close. And then the Georgia special election, I also believe, would be by a tilt margin. I don't really think there's much chance that Raphael Warnock wins in this state. He doesn't have much fundraising. He's not that good of a candidate. And I do believe either Doug Collins or Kelly Loeffler is going to end up winning because, you know, um, Raphael Warnock, even if he makes it to the special election, Democrats historically haven't done well in the special elections here. And so I do believe that even in a best case scenario, they still end up losing this by tilt margin there. Democrats are already at 50 seats here, but getting these tilt margin states, we have three of them, Montana, Iowa, and the state of Georgia. Now, first, Montana. You have Steve Bullock here. I've talked about this before. Steve Bullock is the popular governor here running against another Steve, Steve Daines, who's not that popular uh, in this state. And while it's a very red state, it does have a lot of ticket splitters. Hasn't elected a Republican governor since 2000. Elected a Democratic senator in 2018. So Democrats can win this state. And Steve Bullock has done well in some of the polls. He's doing qual uh, quite well in the fundraising. And overall, that could uh, end up giving him a victory. And in the state of Iowa, you know, we also have Teresa Greenfield here, who's very similar to Joni Ernst in many ways, but Joni Ernst is quite unpopular that many people don't know about her. Um, she is quite unpopular. She's one of the most unpopular senators in the country, and Iowa is a very swingy state. Teresa Greenfield's doing well in the fundraising. She's doing well in the polls as well, and overall, in a best case scenario, I do believe they would be able to narrowly win the state of Iowa. And then the final one here, we have the state of Georgia. Georgia, you have David Perdue versus John Ossoff. John Ossoff is a candidate who lost the special election for Georgia's 6th district back in 2017, but um, he is doing, you know, he's doing all right in terms of fundraising he's doing all right in terms of the polling data um and David Perdue isn't that good of a candidate. He's made some, you know, questionable comments on some questionable things. Um, and he only won by seven percentage points in 2014 in a huge red wave year. And so he's not the best candidate for this state. And I do believe that in this scenario, he'd very narrowly lose in a state that is trending towards the Democrats. So overall, a best case scenario for Democrats in the Senate, Democrats get 53 seats, Republicans would get 47. This would be a net gain of six for the Democrats. They would flip seven seats, Republicans would flip one, Democrats would flip Arizona, Colorado, Montana, Iowa, Georgia, North Carolina, and Maine. Republicans would flip um, Ala uh, Miss uh, yeah, Alabama. They would flip Alabama. Um, and so overall, the Democrats would get 53 seats. Republicans would get 47. This would be a pretty big win for them, effectively a waiver in this scenario. So yeah, thank you all for watching this video. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also join the Discord that is linked down in the description. So thank you all for watching this video again, and I will see you guys later.